<laughs> Welcome to Wine Wednesday, everybody. My name is Stephanie Alleman, and who are you? My name is Chantel Hickman Lapp. You look great today, Chantel. What law firm do you work at? I work at Alleman Law with myself and Stephanie. We are the Elder Law Ladies. Oh, that's me, Stephanie Alleman. Thank you for joining us today <laughs> on Wine Wednesday. I have my microphone. I am interviewing today the wonderful attorney, Chantel, and we're going to let you guys in on a little secret. What's it actually like to go through a guardianship? We're going to talk about that today. If you have questions, pop them in the comments section. But without further ado, let's jump right in. We want to know what's it like? What is a guardianship? How, what goes on? What's it actually like? Yeah, so we say this a lot. But just to drive the point home, so after you hit the age of 18, no one has the right to do things for you, make decisions for you. You either have to give someone the authority to do things for you, like pay your bills, cancel accounts that you don't use anymore, things like that, make medical decisions for you. You have to give them that authority or you're looking at a court giving someone that authority in order to act on your behalf if you haven't pre-planned and given someone that authority. So you give someone the authority to act for you in a power of attorney, and then if the court has to step in, then you're in the guardianship process, and that's what we're here to talk about. So that process is very, very cumbersome. It's not a walk in the park. I'm pretty sure I heard it was a walk in the park. So we make it a walk in the park for our clients because we like to think that we, you know, help our clients get through these difficult situations and that we're really nice and try to explain things as much as possible to make it as easy as possible so that it feels like a walk in the park. But it's really, it's really not because you're in court. So you, you know, we typically get a phone call and the person is saying, oh my gosh, you know, my family member, my spouse, they they're not doing great. And someone has told me that I can't take care of things for them because I don't have a power of attorney. And so they're telling me that I need to call an attorney and get a guardianship. Mm -hmm. What is that? Mm -hmm. And so that's usually how the phone call starts. And then we gather information. We prepare documents. We have to talk about why a guardianship is necessary. So the fancy word is why is someone incapacitated? And we have to go through a conversation to figure out, okay, so we have to tell people about the guardianship. We have to notify the person. We have to notify certain family members. It's all in the statutes on who we have to notify. Because what if you're a bad person and you're trying to take advantage of someone and steal all their money? I know. So we have to notify people so that they have their opportunity to come to court and say, judge, don't put that person in charge because they're a wrongdoer, or give the person an opportunity to come to court and say, what the what? Mm -hmm. I'm totally good. I've also heard rumors about something called an emergency guardianship. Is that a thing? Can you do that? It is, yes. So another situation that can come up is an emergency guardianship, and that is exactly what it sounds like, an emergency. So something needs to get done immediately. Someone is a harm to themselves, a harm to others. There is some impending deadline that's upon you to take care of things and you don't have the authority to take care of it. Something major is happening and someone needs to be able to step in and have authority to act on someone's behalf and only a judge can grant that. That's when you're, you know, trying to get things done in, you know, a day, two days, go running to the courthouse, hoping that the judge has time for you to get in and plead your case and talk about why this is necessary. So that's another layer of issues. But after, even after that happens, then you have to schedule a hearing. Mm -hmm. And you have to give people notice of this hearing and they have to show up, you have to show up, and they only have to show up if they want to say you're not the right person. But you have to show up and you have to talk to the judge and you have to tell them why this is necessary. You have to, get medical records to talk about any diagnoses, so any mental illnesses the person has, if they have dementia, Alzheimer's, you have to prove why this person can't act on their own behalf. Rewind, just for a second, because you file these 
pleadings, these court documents is what I'm told. Mm -hmm. And you just get to walk in and you get to start filing things at this court clerk office and then you get to go to a judge or is there a fee involved with just filing paperwork with the courthouse? Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. So with all court hearings, there's always a fee to start a court hearing. You are paying attorney fees. You know, you might find a flat fee. Uh, Some people do hourly fees. Either way, it's expensive. It's going to cost you a few thousand dollars to do this. And not a lot of people can just drop a few thousand dollars on court fees out of the blue. Because a lot of times this stuff really does hit you out of the blue. And you're scrambling trying to get money together, trying to get information together, trying to find an attorney or figure out what you need to do. Pop quiz, what is a typical filing fee with the court system to open a guardianship? So it depends on if you are a family member or if you are a non-family member. So the family member price is going to be a little bit discounted, a lot of it discounted. It's like half the price. It's more than half the price sometimes, but I'm a reporter. I don't know such things. (laughs) Yeah, so it's a couple hundred dollars if you're a non-family member versus like 80 something dollars if you are a family member. Depending on the county, guys. I've done my research as a reporter Mm -hmm. and it depends on the county because you'll walk in and say, can I pay you $67 for a family guardianship? And they will say, no, you will pay us Mm $214.14 and we don't care that it's a family member. So it depends on the county for sure for Mm -hmm. where it's at. And it's always a toss up. It's always fun to find out. What courthouse does what and how much exactly they're going to charge. Mm -hmm. But then what about who you have to tell? You mentioned that earlier. You have to tell some people about the hearing Mm -hmm. that's coming up. What about the person you're trying to get guardianship over? Yeah, so you definitely, that's important to tell the person that the guardianship is, you're trying to get over them. You have to tell them. And that can be a problem. Because we've had some cases where the person is in a hospital and they might be in a lockdown unit in the hospital. And guess what? That causes a lot of problems because you're trying to coordinate with people to get these this paperwork to the person. You know, you've seen it in the movies where someone walks up to you and they're like, are you so-and-so? And they're like, maybe. And they say, you're served. It's not that aggressive. Uh, we like to be a little bit nicer whenever we're the ones who have to do that, but that causes problems. It can cause delays in the guardianship. That's happened before too. Also hospitals might be like, who the heck are you? Do you even have authority to talk to us? There's a thing called HIPAA. We're not allowed to just tell you that people are in our facility. And so that can cause problems too in helping get the process even going and get the person notice that this guardianship is happening because that's required. Mm -hmm. And that I'm sure it can cause a ton of confusion, especially when there's a guardianship and you're dealing with someone who's incapacitated, they have dementia, Alzheimer's, something else that makes things a little bit foggy for him. And all of a sudden somebody, an attorney, process server, Mm -hmm. a sheriff walks up and says, you know, hey, someone's trying to get guardianship over you. That can cause so much heartache, so much confusion. It's just not a great situation. But I've also, I mean, I'm just assuming here, surely a spouse, like you and your spouse, you could definitely just willy-nilly act on each other's behalf, you know, for bank accounts or like the business, you're you're an attorney, you're great, you have a law firm. He could just step in and Act on your behalf, right? Is that how that works? It is not. So a lot of people think, I have the right to act on behalf of my spouse. Of course. Of course I do. Why would I not? And that's not true. If you have jointly owned assets, sure, you can access those jointly owned assets because you're also an owner on that account. But if something's not in your name, like a mortgage, guys, that happens quite frequently. Only one spouse is on the mortgage. I know. Don't steal our material for two weeks from now's Wine Wednesday. We will see you in two weeks for Wine Wednesday for some tips and tricks, guys. I know. She just stole one. But that's a thing. Uh, filing taxes. You can't file taxes for your spouse. Someone has to have, a, have authority to sign off on those things. So, no, you're not automatically your spouse's, you know, 
person to take care of them. And that comes as a huge shock to people a lot. And same thing, they usually don't find that out until they try to do something and the person is like, who are you? Oh, you're their spouse. That's so unfortunate. You don't have the authority to act on their behalf, even though Mm -hmm. you thought that you did. And that's another thing. So in the guardianships, you have to tell the court all of the assets that someone's name is on. And guess what? If you're married and you have joint assets, got to tell the judge about it because that person that the guardianship is over, their name is on that. And so you have to let the judge know that that's an asset that's out there that's in their name. And it's very, it feels very intrusive. Thankfully, the guardianship court stuff is sealed. So people can't just go willy nilly look it up like a probate. But even still, you're like, hey, I don't want people to be in my business knowing Mm -hmm. what I have, knowing how much money's in my bank account. And guess what? Every year, you, I know, just, I get so, so impassioned about this. <laughs> um, and every year you have to give an accounting of what's been going on with that money. You have to let the judge know so that if you are a wrongdoer, a hundred thousand dollars is missing over this year. The judge can be like, what'd you spend that money on? Where's a hundred thousand dollars? I see that there's a vacation to Mexico on here. Mm-hmm. What's that about? What was that? Clearly beneficial to the ward. (laughs) Clearly that Mexican vacation for the guardians. But what is this, you know, not everybody has somebody. Not everybody has a ton of family, a ton Mm -hmm. of friends. And so, yes, you've talked about the notice thing. You have to give notice to certain people based on the Oklahoma laws that are out there. Mm -hmm. But what about people who have people, but they're out of state? What about that? Mm -hmm. So out of state people, that can cause a huge problem. Because you're out of state. So then you run into trying to coordinate how these people can get in front of a judge, get on the phone with them. Also, when there's out of state people, a lot of times what we see is that they realize a guardianship is necessary too late. Adult Protective Services has been called at that point because, you know, somehow uh, someone found out that someone wasn't being taken care of. They were living in really poor conditions. You know, Adult Protective Services gets called. Then the family gets notified and they're like, what the heck? I live out of state. Mm -hmm. And so it can cause a lot of problems that way by having people out of state. Not to mention, if you find out that your out of state family member needs help, Mm -hmm. they need someone to step in, you're their closest relative to step in, then you're looking at, you know, okay, I'm going to get guardianship and then move them to my state so that they're closer. Guess what? You have to transfer that guardianship to the state, which comes with more fees. And fun fact, if you're not a family member, our statutes make it even more difficult. Only a select few family members who live out of state are entitled to be the guardian in our statutes. And so that adds an extra layer of complications If you are a really close friend, Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you were their deceased spouses or deceased child's family member, Mm -hmm. something like Mm -hmm. that, but you're very close. You're obviously the best person for the job. It causes more problems. Mm -hmm. So to wrap this up, do you have an overarching moral to this story? Is there anything that can be done? Because it sounds like you're just going to keep giving money to the court, basically, and to an attorney to do a guardianship, and then it comes with annual fees and annual requirements, and mm-hmm. judges are different, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. And so different judges will require different levels of an accounting, I would only presume. Mm-hmm. And that's got to be rough, depending on which judge, and the attorney's got to know which judge requires what type of accounting, how strict and how detailed it has to be. Pretty sure we might have filed bank accounts today in a case because the judge just, here's all the statements for the last year. But anyway, I'm just a lowly reporter. And so what is the moral of the story to this? What can you do to try and avoid this? Plan ahead. Plan, 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 plan. Especially Mm. if you don't have a lot of family or you're like, I haven't talked to my family in 10 years. Plan ahead. Name your people who you want to take care of you because you know best. Mm -hmm. The court system wants you to name people. They don't want to guess. That's why they have court hearings to give people an opportunity to come in and contest because you haven't said what you wanted. 
They don't want to get involved, people. They, they don't. want you to do estate planning. They want you to stay out of the court system because mm -hmm. they busy. Mm -hmm. They don't have time for this. But yet they make time because our judges are wonderful, specifically mm -hmm. in Oklahoma County. Mm -hmm. But we love our judges, but it's difficult. It's mm -hmm. yearly requirements. It's so much work before a judge. You have to have an attorney involved unless you want to do it pro se. And then we say, Godspeed. You know, there are there's a clinic. We have we're participants of a lovely clinic that's mm -hmm. downtown and it's going to be opening up soon if you want information about that but there's things that we do to help people but guardianships are expensive they're time consuming they're yearly requirements getting a power of attorney mm -hmm. not from the internet is cheaper than a guardianship mm -hmm. it's cheaper than that mm -hmm. i can tell you that and yeah. you get more leeway to say what who can do it and what they can do. Mm -hmm. We love telling people how customized you can make your own estate plan. It's like, what do you want? Every time they're like, well, what about this? And we're like, we can make that happen. That's not a problem. Let's mm -hmm. do that in your estate plan. And so you get to have so much customization and power over your own estate plan. When you go to guardianship court, you've lost your power because some judge has said somebody else gets the power over you. And that's what we want to avoid at all possible cost mm -hmm. but if it happens in your estate planning documents you get to nominate who your guardian would be and that's where the judge gets to say when they had full capacity we know exactly what they wanted because they mm -hmm. said i would like x and then y and then maybe z and a to be my guardian if it came down to that which there are situations where it does mm -hmm. but you can plan ahead that's the moral of the story and so, do you have anything else to add, Miss Attorney Chantel? Get your powers of attorney. Call an estate planning attorney. That's a no-brainer, ladies and gentlemen. So please, please call an attorney. Get this set up before it's too late and you end up in guardianship court. It's never a super happy situation, mm -hmm. that's for sure. So please, call a, and get an appointment scheduled so you can get your power of attorneys. Talk to your parents about it. Talk to your family members about it. Talk to your kids who are over the 18. You don't have the legal authority to act on them any, anymore after they mm -hmm. turned 18. All of the above. Call with questions. We would love to have them. Thank you for attending our Wine Wednesday. We will see you in two weeks. And let us know if you have any questions.